regional accreditation needs and state level needs. And so when we ask them, you know, what have you received or what would be helpful for you? Um, you know, one person said that they feel like they needed to be a specialist in all areas, but they don't have the training to do it, right? So even if you haven't worked on an AOT team, maybe you worked for a nonprofit where you wear many hats, but you probably have been trained in one job. So there is just a need for cross-training. How do we get to a point where we can cross-train um, these staff and other roles so that they don't feel the burden of um, needing to be a specialist? Because that's not the point. You don't need to be a specialist in all the roles. But what could we create that would give them a base level of knowledge? And then also for being understaffed. So we know that community-based work is tough, right? It is not for everyone. And you're gonna have turnover, right? Especially with the peer specialist role. And so how can we create a training that really helps to buffer how stressful it is when I'm having to do my role and someone else's role, right? And then one more aspect here. Someone said, sometimes I wonder if I get too involved, but I don't know when staff have expectations of when they'd like for me to step in, when they'd like for me to be more assertive, and when they'd like for me to take more of a step, more of a backseat. And I really appreciate this quote because it tells me, hey, I might, I might know the, begin, the beginning and the ending of my own role, the limits of my role, but I don't know that for all the other staff. And I wanna, I wanna be a, a good team player. I wanna do what I can, but I don't really know if, I, if like this staff person will think I'm overstepping. So this just showed me again that there is a need for cross-training. There is a need for all the staff to have this shared knowledge of what each other does without needing to become a specialist. And then lastly, this did not come from our needs assessment. This came from our project director, which is Joseph. So, um, and that was, hey, how do we hire the right people to do this work? This is, this is a different way of working. Right, where we have to, the team really has to work well together and lean on one another. That every day they're talking about, okay, these are the things we need to do for the day, who's gonna do what? And so they have to have a lot of emotional intelligence and ability to communicate. And, and so Joe asked, what, what should we be asking about in these interviews? You know, to really assess for teamwork attitudes and perceptions. Because we can hire for skills all day, and then you get someone in who is not bought into teamwork, right? They wanna do their own thing. And so we learned by looking into this or even just reflecting on our own culture that these are the mental models that we all bring with us to all jobs. Top-down leadership, someone makes the decision, right? And so the doctors and nurses are, are usually the ones with the, the most education. And if someone is not comfortable with equal voice, right, a nurse or a doctor, they may not work well in this environment because they're not gonna have more of a voice than the peer specialist, than the employment specialist. So we wanna ask them about that. Also, I just said individuality, but I think it's really similar to the multidisciplinary team. I have my job, my expertise, and I just wanna do my job and go home, right? But this way of working <coughs> is so far from that. Um, this way of working is we are greater than we, right? You, you, you have to give up ego to work as a team. And then lastly, um, which I already said this, but when we tend to, when we interview, we look at skills, right? We are kind of sizing up the person, right? We don't say this, but do I feel good with this person when I'm interviewing them? Um, but we do tend to focus on skills and expertise and not so much of what would this person be like on the team. Has anything 